What is up guys? Welcome to Degenerate Watch. In today's episode we're going to be taking a look at homeowners associations or HOAs and we're going to be taking a look at two cases in particular of two people that have found themselves on the foul side of a homeowners association. If you're not familiar with what a homeowners association is, it basically is an organisation that makes and enforces the rules for buildings like condominiums, townhouses and planned single family home communities. When you buy a property in one of these areas that's governed by a homeowners association, you sign a contract and you agree to the rules and you have to pay fees for the upkeep of the area, you know, if there's any communal playgrounds, pools, fitness centres or anything like that. Now, obviously the plus side of that is the area gets maintained to a decent standard, you're not relying on a local authority to do it. Also, some of these provide security and some communities are gated, so you have that extra peace of mind and security. And also property value gets protected because the rules and regulations that are put in are put in to help protect property value in the area and to keep the area looking nice. But as you'll see in the two cases that we're going to take a look at today, it's not always plain sailing and sometimes these homeowners associations can be a bit too overreaching. So stick around to the end of the video if you want to learn a little bit more about homeowners associations and we go a little bit more in depth about the different types of ones there are. And just before we jump into the first clip today, if you're enjoying the video, please drop a like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new upload on Degenerate Watch. There's links down below to our social media and also to ways you can help support the channel. So with all that being said, let's jump into the video. Enjoy. Andy Lipka loves classic cars. His Ford F-250 pickup truck runs like a top. In his opinion, it's pretty close to perfect. When you looked at it, you didn't think, I want to paint this or change no. this? Oh, no, no, no. I looked at it and thought it's, uh, it's beautiful uh, the way it is. It, it reminds me of the truck that uh, I grew up in with my dad. Not only does Lipka love the way it drives, he likes this paint job. It's not damage. It's just the way the finish has evolved over the years. His homeowners association hates it. So much so, they are suing Lipka. The bylaws state vehicles with moderately severe body damage can't be parked in the driveway. But Lipka says this isn't body damage. It's the original Ford paint uh, from 1965, and it's sought after now, classic car enthusiasts. In the car world, it's known as a patina finish, but don't take Lipka's yeah. word for it. This is a vehicle we built a couple years ago. Noah Alexander owns Classic Car Studio in St. Louis. You can see the top surfaces get worn first. Alexander knows cars, and he knows trends. Some clients specifically request the patina finish. Is it fair to say it's becoming more popular? I think it's very popular right now and it is becoming more popular. But in Lipka's case, beauty is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to the Woodfield Homes Association in Chesterfield. He parks in his driveway because his garage houses two other vehicles. He's been assessed nearly three grand in fines and he's facing a very serious threat. The lawsuit also Im implicates my house. They want to foreclose on my house. You heard that correctly. If the fines aren't paid, the HOA will seek foreclosure. Lipka has filed a countersuit. He understands the benefits of HOAs and rules that prohibit parking cars with flat tires or ones that are inoperable outside. But he feels like this has gone too far. And they're making this personal and, and almost an attack and level harassment. Do HOAs have too much power in Missouri? They do because it becomes almost a thiefdom. State Representative Brian Spencer represents rapidly growing Wentzville, where new neighborhoods and new HOAs are sprouting up. I go to about anywhere from 60 to 80 HOA meetings a year. Uh, they are my number one district concern. He says he's tried to introduce legislation that would curb HOA power, but the plan fell apart in Jefferson City. I've worked on legislation, uh, a homeowner's bill of rights, uh, which has gone nowhere because of the lobbyist efforts. Did the homeowner's bill of rights include things like you should be able to keep a car in your driveway if you like it? It allowed you to make decisions about your property that you bought. It gave the private property owners rights. I reached out to the president of Lipka's HOA. I did not hear back, but an attorney for the HOA says the association is asking the court to enforce its covenants, which Mr. Lipka agreed to follow and was aware of prior to purchasing his home. Lipka says he's not aware of any covenant that prevents this truck from being parked on his property. The attorney goes on to say Mr. Lipka is not being singled out and the association and neighbors made numerous attempts to reach a resolution. 
Lipka, a combat veteran, says this is a battle unlike any he's fought before. The saying goes, combat creates clarity. This is different. There's no clarity here. I'm just baffled at that because the man could potentially lose the roof over his head, the home he worked hard for just because of the paint job on his truck. I don't really understand the issue because there's no way that a paint job on a truck could drive down property value in the area. Yeah, I'd understand some guy running a scrapyard out of his front garden, like, but this is just ridiculous. It's things like these that make homeowners associations look so bad and shed a really nasty light on them when they overreach their boundaries like that, make up nonsensical rules and then ram them down people's throats. We're going to jump into our next clip now and yet another homeowners association overreaching their boundaries with a couple of examples in this clip. This is where we live and it's not right. Lloyd Havel lives at the hills of Inverary in Lauder Hill, a private community and called me after getting a call from his HOA. Car's expiring and uh, in disrepair. I'm like, car's not in disrepair, I drive it, and uh, uh, the tags are expired. So I said, okay, fine. Lloyd tells me he bought a new car and moved the old one outside, covered it until he could decide what to do with it, which prompted another question and call to the HOA. That's fine, we'll go ahead and you know move the car, do that, that's not really a problem, but how did you even know that? He's like, oh, well, we went up and we uh, we uncovered your car and we, 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 we searched on your car. I was like, you did what? Lloyd's next call was to Lauder Hill Police to report the incident. He also started talking to the neighbors who had their own story. Storage bins opened and rummaged through on their patios. This 2014 police report was made after a woman claimed a worker broke into her screened-in patio. Actually went and slid open the screen, reached inside, found the lock for the door, broke in. To use an electrical outlet. That worker claimed the okay was given by the same property manager police talked to in Lloyd's incident, who says he spotted Lloyd's parked covered car with a flat tire. The property manager says Lloyd's driveway is a limited common area, meaning he's allowed to access it, and said the disabled covered car violated the association's rules, so he lifted the cover, noted the expired tag, and then called Lloyd. That's the scary part about it. These are the ones that we know about. How many more that we don't know about? The bigger issue is, why are you doing this? And we feel it's kind of creepy. I was given the same letter Lloyd got from his HOA's lawyers, which cited Lloyd's driveway as a common element that the association must be able to access and that Lloyd has no right to privacy from the association identifying a car parked in a driveway. What happened oftentimes is that members of the board overreach in their zeal to do the right thing. And he says homeowners rights in an HOA are not absolute. That's when the rules have to be clear to and for everyone. They are seeking here to have the condominium docks uh, modified and to be specific, as we discussed about what the, they can, what can, they can and do, and, and, and the procedures for giving a notice, the procedures for inspection, etc. And that's, that's the right step. Lloyd has since collected dozens of signatures from his neighbors to address those concerns and those rules. We find it invasive. We, we do not feel safe. And what that guy says at the end just there, we do not feel safe, really just sums it up. If you don't feel safe in your own home, where can you feel safe? I just think it's absolutely shocking that people can work so hard to put a roof over their heads and they can end up in a situation like this where these homeowners associations are acting so like basically authoritarian where they're bringing in all these draconian measures to try to clamp down. And it's basically what I think it is, is a couple of people in the community having an ego and what I don't like nobody else is allowed to have or whatever. People with too much time on their hands and want to tell everybody else how to live. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to have a quick look at some different types of homeowners associations and we're just going to discuss a little bit about them. So basically there are three main types of homeowners associations that are most commonly found. Those are condominium homeowners associations, townhouse homeowners associations and single family home homeowners associations. We'll start off with a condo homeowners association, which are typically the most restrictive. A condo is basically like an apartment that you own and they own the exterior and all the common areas. So in these associations, you get to vote on who is actually on the board of the homeowners association and those would be the people making the rules and enforcing the rules. Some of those rules can include where to park, 
what color your window treatments can be. It can also go into what type of plants you can and can't have and even what kind of holiday decorations you can have on display in your windows and entranceways. Your homeowners association will manage any gyms, pools, parking garages and storage units that happen to be on the property that they're managing. Next we'll move on to townhouse homeowners associations and a townhouse is defined as a single family residence of at least two floors and at least one shared wall with another residence. You have the same features as a condo homeowners association in terms of they look after the upkeep of the place and as I said any gyms and common areas and stuff like that. But they're less restrictive in the fact that you actually own the exterior of your property like your garden and stuff like that. But still there may be rules on the type of landscaping you can have in the garden and even the colour of your mailbox. But when it comes to holiday decorations such as Christmas and Halloween, you can usually kind of have your own free reign to do what you want without having to fill out a pile of forms. And finally, single family home HOAs. Usually homeowners associations are usually only associated with condos and townhouse complexes, but they're becoming more and more common for single family detached houses as part of planned communities. For example, as of 2017, 61% of new single family homes built in the United States were in a HOA and that was up from 46% in 2009. A good thing about some of these homeowners associations is they provide gates or security on the complex so like that adds an extra peace of mind as I said before and obviously if they've added a pool or a gym for the kids that's really good because sometimes local authorities are strapped for cash or they just don't want to spend the cash on putting in these facilities in the community. The cost of fees in a HOA actually varies depending on whereabouts it is. If it's in the city centre sort of an area then it's obviously higher and as you go out to the suburbs it becomes more more and more less expensive and that's basically because they tend to cover less. For example you'd be responsible for the upkeep of your four walls, the yard and getting insurance and stuff like that but they can still be demanding in the do's and don'ts of living in the community especially upscale type of neighborhoods and stuff like that so it's kind of good to do your research if you're planning on buying a home where you know there's it's under the control of a homeowners association. And it's good to maybe, if you can, ask around the community and see what the sort of vibe about the homeowners association is because you can always get that one guy on the association, especially if he's the chairman, that makes everyone's business his own and uh, will start telling you what colour curtains you can have and how many guests you can have visiting you. And it's always good to be aware that once you buy, you're a member and you're, you're stuck until you move house. Another couple of points to look out for is to ask about the costs see how often they increase, how many people are on the board and how long the terms and conditions are for. There's also cases of homeowners associations mismanaging funds and there's not enough money being put into the area, no maintenance or upgrades and like your house then gets hit with a what they call special assessment and you're required to cough up more money on top of your normal fees to cover the cost that they should have been covering. I'm going to cover a few of these horror stories from homeowners associations mismanaging funds in a future video. But like, this this sort of thing isn't really as popular here in Ireland. Yeah, we do have complexes that are managed by companies, but they don't seem to be as interfering. Yeah, they might clamp your guest or something like that because they're parked in the wrong area. And there have been cases here of where the companies haven't really lived up to what they're supposed to do. They haven't put the money in or they haven't met their legal obligations and the residents have been kind of left holding the baby, so to speak. Well, guys, that just about wraps up our little look at homeowners associations and we'll be revisiting homeowners associations in a future video very soon. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. It really helps us out. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you get subscribed. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a new upload here on Degenerate Watch. There's links down below to our social media. We're on Twitter and Instagram and there's also a link down below if you'd like to help support the channel. Thanks to everyone for watching and all your support. This has been Degenerate Watch. Until next time, stay safe, take care, peace.